Hey guys, how's it going? My name is VidOcean and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now I'm going to try to expand this to web development and a particular library called React, which is made by Facebook, but that's in a couple of weeks time. Now continuing with the theme of AI, we're going to be creating a machine learning mobile app using Xcode from Apple and Low.AI from Microsoft. The best part of this tutorial is that you will not need to write a single line of code to build this application. So let's get cracking. Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Before we start building out our mobile application, there's two prerequisites that we're going to need to install. So the first one is Lobe, and you'll be able to find this piece of software using the URL lobe.ai. Now, once you navigate to the site, you'll see a download link. If you click on the link, uh, you'll be able to just fill out the credentials, click the download button and the software will start downloading. It's approximately 500 megabytes. Now, the next piece of software that you're going to need to download and install is Xcode. Now, unfortunately, Xcode does not run on Windows machines. It only runs on MacBooks. If you do, however, have a MacBook, you can navigate to the URL developer.apple.com slash Xcode. And if you scroll down, you will see the download link to the latest Xcode software, which is Xcode 12. Now, I would just like to add, if you do not have a MacBook, it's not a problem. You can still follow the first part of the tutorial as we will be using Lobe to train our machine learning model. Now, once you have installed Lobe on your machine, be it a Windows machine or MacBook, you can navigate to the icon, click on the application, and it should open up a window similar to this. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a flower spotter app. Now, I have already went over to the internet and downloaded my images, but if you want to do it on a different use case, you are welcome to do so. It's going to work exactly the same. So I'm going to navigate to the folder where I've placed my images. Now, there are four flower types that I'm going to be looking at. So it's going to be daisies, roses, sunflowers, and tulips. Now, what we've done is we followed the traditional machine learning methodology of splitting our data into training and testing uh, data sets, right? So these are the images essentially. So if I click on Daisy, which is the training data set, I've created or I've downloaded rather 10 Daisy images. So if I click on one of them, you can see this is an image of a Daisy. Now, obviously, it all of these images are different. I try to find different variations of daisies and the same for the other three flower sets and this is for the training data set i've also created the testing data set and if we go into this folder you will see there is a bunch of testing images for daisies as well okay enough of the admin stuff let's get straight to our build okay I'm going to close down this image and the folder. So the first thing what we're going to need to do is create a new project. So I'm going to click on new project. And then I'm going to navigate to the import section, which is on the top right. So I'm going to click on import. And we can do this individually by importing uh, images individually. We can use the camera, which I will use in another use case in a bit and the third comp the third option is a data set which is essentially a group of folders so that is the one that we're going to be doing right so i'm going to click on data sets i'm going to click on choose data set and i'm going to go into our our folders to grab our in our flower types all right okay the, so the first one is going to be daisies i'm going to click on this folder i'm going to click on open So there's two options. You can either use the folder to give it a label or label it manually. So if you want to uh, have a different name for daisies, you can click on label manually and give it your own name. But I'm going to I'm going to keep the same naming convention. So um, I'm going to import this folder, this daisy folder now. So as you can see, all the daisy images have been imported and it's given it that specific name. So there are 10 images that have been imported. Now, what I'm going to be, be doing is I'm going to go ahead and import 
the other flower types. So once again, click on import, click on data set, choose the data set. I'm gonna click on rows now and use the training data set. Open once again, labeled using the folder name and import. So we have 10 pictures for roses that have been imported as well, right? I'm gonna click on import again. Just finish up with the other song with the other flower types. Okay, sunflower. And then the last one, which is the tulip. All right, perfect. So I've imported. So once you've heard that noise, that's basically saying that the model is training, training uh, the, imp the imported data set the, or the imported images. So now that our model has completed its training, let's go ahead and test to see if it's working as expected. So I'm, before I do that, I'm just gonna go into the training data so I can show you exactly how the model has trained all the images. So it's saying it's it's uh, predicted 100% uh, accuracy, but we can obviously test that out just to see if it's working um, as it's say, saying it, it, it does, okay. Okay, let's click on the play button. And now what I'm gonna do is I am going to drag and drop a couple of, of these images. And I'm gonna do it from the testing data set, right? So let's just move this to the side. So we have a bit of room. And let's do this here, okay. So we're gonna start with the testing data set and let's Okay, we have not, this is from the testing data set and we have not imported this image, so let's drag it in. Okay, it has predicted Daisy correctly. You can see from the name. Now, let's just say if this was incorrect, um, I would be able to um, inform the model right, right away and I will be able to either click the yes or no button. So if this was not a Daisy, I would click on this little icon and then uh, the model will know that it is incorrect. But because it is a daisy, I'm going to go and uh, click on the, the green tick. And it has been added to the data set. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one, right? Okay, so this is a nice one because it is predicted incorrectly, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, that this is a sunflower, not a daisy. And now it has added the sunflower to the model. Now let's test it again, just to make sure that it's working as predicted, right? Because now I have added a new test case and let's see if it's working. Okay, fantastic. It's now predicting the sunflower as a sunflower. So I'm gonna add it again. I'm gonna try one more. Yes, it is working as expected. Fantastic. All right. Now let's go to uh, a ro the roses. So I'm going to click on rose. And let's drag in this image. Okay, it's predicted rose correctly. Let's choose another image. It's predicted it again. And I just added that to the model. Now let's just do a tulip just to make sure that everything is working as expected. Okay, it predicted it accurately. I'm gonna add it to our training, our, our model. And let's do another one. Fantastic. It has added the tulip, is, um, predicted it correctly, and I've just added the tulip to the model. Okay guys, so we are now done with training our model. Our model has been trained and it is ready to be exported. So this is gonna be the fun bit because this model is going to be used to create our mobile application in iOS. So before we export our model, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this name from Daisy to Flower Spotter. That's going to be the name of our application and it'll display on our mobile phone. So let's call it Flower Spotter. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on file and then click on export. Now you're gonna see a range of different model types, machine learning model types. Now, what the one that we're going to be using for our iOS mobile app is Core ML because Core ML is the, the, the one that Apple uses, okay? So I'm just gonna place uh, my, I'm gonna export my model in the lobe folder and I'm going to click on the export button, All right? It should take a little while. Well, not too long, it should take around 25 seconds. And once completed, you should see it in your folder. Fantastic, the model has successfully exported. So we can just double check. Okay, so the model is called Flower Spotter Core ML. So if I go into this folder, what we're gonna be using is this specific file type. So we say save model.ml model. That's the one that we're going to be using for our iOS app. All right, guys, it's getting exciting now. So let's create our iOS app. So, so far, we did not have to write a single line of code, right? So that's really awesome. Um, and it's going to continue till the end. So don't worry, you don't have to uh, be writing any code. It's going to be quite simple. Okay, we're going to navigate to GitHub. And the specific repository that we're going to be navigating to is github.com uh, forward slash lobe, right? And once you're in this repository, you're gonna be downloading the iOS bootstrap uh, repository. So you're gonna click on it. It's gonna open up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on code and you're gonna click on download zip file. Now I've already downloaded um, this repository. So I'm going to go uh, directly and open up my application. All right, guys, so we are getting closer to the end. Okay. I've placed my repository, which I've downloaded from GitHub on my desktop. It's called iOS Bootstrap. So I'm gonna open up that folder, right? And it has a model called lobemodel.ml model already in the repository, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to replace it with the one which we have created. So it's flowerspotter.ml and I am going to copy it and paste it in the same folder. Now, the documentation says that, the, well, the documentation on GitHub says that we should uh, name our model lobemodel.ml model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna rename our one, uh, which is save model to lobe model, right? So let's just do that quickly. Copy it and delete it from there and rename it. Fantastic. Okay, great stuff, guys. So now our model has been saved and added into our repository. Okay, let's go. I'm going to click on this Xcode project and Xcode is going to start up. All right. Great stuff. So once Xcode opens, you're gonna see this interface with um, the screen of code. Uh, please take note that you're gonna have to rewrite all of this uh, by creating another file, uh, another Swift file. So please take note of it. Uh, we're gonna have to transfer this. No, I'm just kidding, guys. You will not need to write a single line of code. Uh, the only thing that you're gonna need to do is if you have a MacBook, make sure that Xcode has been installed. Um, and once it has been installed, you're gonna have to connect your iPhone device um, to, your, to your computer. And under the simulators, so I'm just gonna help you out and show you how to do this. So at the top, you will see, it'll say devices. It may show your iPhone if you have connected it. If not, um, you may need to provision that. If you have any difficulties, please just drop a, content, uh, a comment in the YouTube chat and I will assist you. Uh, but if you do see your iPhone popping up, uh, then it's a good sign. 
Um, there's other simulators here, but essentially you want to run it on your phone just to see how it works. So you will select your phone and then all you got to do is click on the play button. So as you can see, the Flower Spotter app has been installed on the iPhone. We're now going to run the app. It immediately detects that the image on the computer is a rose and it predicts it correctly. Now we're going to move on to some of the other pictures. So the sunflower is also predicted correctly. And now we're going to do the last one, which is a tulip. and it predicts it correctly as well. So there we have it, guys. So as promised earlier, we will now use the camera functionality to build another machine learning model to see if a person is wearing a mask. Let's go ahead and build our mask detection ML model. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new project. I'm just gonna name it mask detection. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, our camera as mentioned before. So click on import, click on camera. It's gonna open up my camera on my laptop. I'm gonna show a picture of myself and let's take a couple of pictures, right? So I'm gonna name it mask off, that's the label. And let's take a couple of pictures of myself. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one with the mask on. All right. And I'm gonna name it. All right. And let's go ahead and take a couple pictures. Great stuff. Okay. So it's gonna take a few seconds to train the model. As you can see, uh, it's busy training. Okay, great stuff. The training is completed. Now let's give it a shot to see if it's working. So we're showing that the mask is off, right? And now let's try it with the mask on. There we go. The mask on. Now, obviously, because I have not trained with the mask dropped below my mouth, so it's not sure whether the mask is on or off. But with Lobe, you are able to do those little subtle differences or, or, or changes. So I'll be able to train the model uh, to say that if my mask is below my mouth, then that basically means that my mask is off. So there we have it, guys. Uh, another use case that you can uh, import into a mobile app, or you can just have it uh, in multiple variations, whether if it's an IoT device. Or